We talk about use cases. Use cases have been mentioned. Caroline, you mentioned. I'm going to come back to you again about this. Do the new use cases that MEC will purportedly enable help to justify the CSP's return on investment and NFV? Um, I, I'd like to think so. Obviously, <laughs> there's enough <laughs> operator here to answer. But um, so, if if I may dare to share some of that, we we've been working on this for a couple of years and uh, working with different partners and, and some of them, the operators are actually in the room and work with the, uh, heavily with the HPE, for example. Some of the learning we have found is that uh, because we are at a stage we're trying to find the right business model and the ROI, we will actually go to the enterprise first and understand their pain points and requirements. One of the first things we did was actually a retail store. You wouldn't think about it, a retail store, they self-contained. But in reality, the retail store, both in terms of operation and user experience, is really, really important. You will be surprised to know that how many, the desire to have AR, VR. In the case that we actually go into deployment uh, later this year, and they were able to uh, um, share that had they not have the Mac in order to deploy new application like AR, VR in their store, would have taken them a year and a half versus now uh, when we, the trial that, that we put up was like in, in November. By the time I went to visit the store in uh, February, it's already there. So in a very short time um, to, to, to be able to add on new applications uh, per store. It's a very self, you know, within a, 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 within a localized content. Uh, not to say that orchestration need to be there. Right now, it's still done manually, but when they go they launch commercially, they have to be able to manage it. So that is obviously an issue that we all need to solve. And then we also vertical, uh, the other vertical we looked at is the transportation, some of the smart transportation, smart city, being a, a, a setup right now, um, it's, it's hot bad right now in US, there's quite a few smart city projects working on. Um, connected car, we have announced 5GAA, we also announced AECC with, uh, with uh, Toyota and, and Docomo and, and Denzo and Ericsson. It's all in a, in a sense to explore that, what can this do? We, we have another initiative in, uh, in Santa Clara on, uh, called uh, 5G Innovation uh, Initiative. Uh, is focusing on uh, verticals. So the, in that case, the founding members, besides Intel and Ericsson, is actually GE and uh, Honeywell. So extremely vertical focus and really go all the way out and try and learn and learn fast and fail fast so you know what not to do. Having done this with verticals, two or three verticals, what did you learn very quickly? Now, the first thing that's the, the because I came from a wireless background, I think most people here are. When you go in and talk to the people there, it's, you're actually talking with the IT guys. You had to complete turn on a different per persona. Mm -hmm. you st I used to still talk about DBs, and they don't want to hear about that. They really want to hear about mm -hmm. security. There better be a Chinese wall between my data and the operator data. It's so important to them. You go into a connected car, people start talking about blockchain. And, and that is, a, I just said it, I, the, the joke is if I said the word, anybody say blockchain, you guys take a drink. <laughs> Let's see who, who falls out of chair first. Yeah, she's okay. yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, on me, yeah. I'm buying. So it, it, it's security, like Diego, you mentioned, it's really important. Manageability, accountability. They know so much about building because they will make out the arrangement, but they need to know exactly how my user experience are as enterprise, because most time it's B2B to C. So that all be wrap into the learning. So we start approaching the problem, not from a uh, communication perspective, but a, a much from a comms and a compute perspective, or more of a cloud with a connectivity perspective. Okay, Caroline. Yeah. Other use cases? Anybody, anything you're gonna tell us? Yeah, probably on the, on the use case side, I mean, one comment I have, to, I have to make here is, I mean, there are a lot of these use cases around. Um, we have a hard time to see that you really need Mac to implement them. And I'm, I'm, we have a hard time to see that somebody is willing to pay extra for it and with all the complication of distribution and so on. What we really need is the what you sort of mentioned a little bit, that uh, uh, third parties install things on that. We need security, we need 
pass cloud native type of capabilities in our NFV platforms. That's 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 given for for us. That's sort of in a B two B type of, of of case. You need this type of capability. But it's sort of a bit for me a bit independent whether this is Mac type or not. Mm. Actually, we definitely need partners uh, to make that happen. Uh, a lot of the vertical applications uh, will be dependent on partner. And uh, we as operators uh, indeed have the task on the security side. Uh, when you look at healthcare vertical, when you look also even at automotive, uh, I wouldn't like my insurance to uh, get data from my way of driving sometimes. Um, so uh, <laughs> these data need to be protected. And uh, that's one of the key tasks of the operator to actually uh, guarantee that under all circumstances. And it fits quite nicely with actually us extending our critical infrastructure towards the edge as well. So uh, I think there's a key role for the operator, but there's also a key role for partners. I think, I think the other industry that we haven't talked about is the hospitality, the hotels. Uh, we haven't talked about the events, so stadiums, uh, you know, where we run uh, you know, games and so forth. So there, is, there are a, a host of uh, use cases that we potentially see healthcare is, uh, is extremely important. Um, I think the part that I think we also need to figure out is, as we look at these industry verticals, they have different hardware needs uh, because of the, the services they need to run. So how do we build a ubiquitous infrastructure that allows us to run these vertical applications that have very unique needs? And then how do we orchestrate it? And I think, you know, as we look at orchestration, from an orchestration point of view, as people, as you know, everybody said here, you know, it's very distributed. So we probably will start to see hierarchical orchestration with controllers, you know, very lightweight. I mean, this is something that is running, you know, on the edge side uh, and taking instructions from the hierarchical controller or the manager above him, uh, and doing orchestration locally and then providing command and control back. Uh, in terms of the, the number of servers, like Diego mentioned, in terms of OpenStack taking multiple servers, I think we'll have to get to headless environments where there's no control from a management point of view. The control platforms are not on the edge side because otherwise, you know, the business case just doesn't work. Uh, doesn't work. So, uh, you know, we have to look at control uh, systems that are sitting in the back end uh, with only the compute platform sitting with the appropriate storage and the virtual networking. And how do we stitch all of these things together with orchestration, the programmability of the infrastructure so we can run the right application with the right workloads. Uh, and then also operationalization. How do we operationalize these things and provide the right target metrics to the ISVs? I mean, it's not just, okay, we can run the app. They want to see how it is behaving, what experience it is delivering. So what KPIs we need to build in, in monitoring and operating these edge nodes that will be viable for the ISVs. So it's not just the orchestration, but the whole OSS uh, aspect becomes very, very critical. Mm. Um, and, and I would add something that is what we don't need at all, which is over-regulation from the beginning. Because the temptation, uh, the temptation of saying, well, this is another uh, telco service, let's regulate it. Let's warranty open, open um, um, well, what, what the uh, regulators call an open offering of, uh, of the infrastructure and open access to the infrastructure, because that would, would kill innovation. I, I could understand that, for example, regulating according to the vertical, regulating health or, or activities that are, I mean, really involving human lives is something that mm. is serious. But regulating service to, to, to the industry or regulating entertaining or regulating touristic services, things like that, I mean, the temptation would be very high. I mean, because at the end, it's something that is, you look at, well, these guys should be regulated by definition. This, they have been always regulated. Why not? And that, I mean, that would kill all the innovation. And at the end, this is like uh, Caroline was saying before, one way or the other, if you need edge services, somebody will occupy the space. And if you are, you cannot move, someone else will move. 